Welcome everyone. So in this video, I'm going to look at dynamic time warping. Dynamic time warping is quite a cool technique and it basically allows you to figure out how to align two signals that might be of different durations. It tells you basically two things. It tells you number one, which points on one of the signals corresponds to the points on the other signal. And then number two, it tells you how similar two signals are to one another. Let's imagine we've got some data from people walking. Uh, each person has some sensors on different parts of their body and we're capturing measurements from all of those different sensors. So in this example, there are two figures. And if we just focus on one of the um, sensors on, on the figures, maybe let's look, just look at the sensor on the big toe of each of the figures. Then if we look at this, the one red curve, you can see this very nice trajectory as the person is walking. If you compare that with the blue curve, we see some similarities, but there are also some big differences. In particular, the blue curve it looks a little bit out of sync with the red curve, right? The, that person's big toe is hitting the floor at different time than the red curve from the other person. But they're still similar in a way. So you could ask multiple questions. Maybe you can ask, how similar is the red curve and the blue curve? How similar are the big toe measurements for these two figures? You can also maybe ask a different question, which is, can I align the two points on the two curves? Can I figure out when the red curve's big toe hits the floor? How does that correspond with the point on the blue curve where that figure's toe hits the floor? And can I find those two corresponding points if I have those signals? And that's what dynamic time warping is going to help us do. So just a little bit more concretely, dynamic time warping is going to help us to figure out how to answer two questions. The one is how similar are two signals and these signals can be of different durations. Um, you, you'll remember from the moving figures that the one basically started moving before the other one and despite the measurements being of different lengths we might still want to compare them. And then the other question that dynamic time warping is going to help us answer is to figure out which points on one of the signals corresponds to points on the other signal. So if we take uh, basically a little snapshot of our two moving figures and let's just simplify it a little bit to be able to discuss things and let's pretend that this is the, the red curve basically where maybe this is the point where the big toe hits the floor and this is the blue curve where the big toe of that other figure hits the floor. And we can ask how similar are these two signals. Maybe you want to pause and just think, if I give you two signals, two lists of numbers, how do you figure out how similar those two lists are? So one approach that we can take is to basically compare the signals point by point. We say, how similar is this point here to this point here? And we maybe calculate um, some distance between those two points. Same for the second point. So mathematically, and this is not what dynamic time warping is going to do, but this is one way to compare two signals. If the red signal is signal X, and this is the first point, that's the second point, and so on, um, up to the nth point here. And the blue signal, let's just call that Y. So we've got Y1, Y2, up to YM here. Then what you can do is you can calculate the distance between X1 and Y1. Uh, maybe we just take the absolute value between those two. So you just take x minus y and you take the absolute value. And we do that for each of the points on uh, the two signals, x, i and y, i. Okay, which means we are going to take the absolute distance between um, this point here and this point here and then this point here and this point here and so on. Um, at some point, so we're comparing this point to that point, we're comparing that point to that point, that point to that point, that point to that point, and so on. At some point, uh, if the two signals are of different durations, which can actually happen quite often, then we're going to run out of points. So then what we might have to do is, I don't know, just pretend that they're zero and just from zero calculate the distances there. And then we just add up all the absolute distances between these two signals for all uh, the different indices of i, 
given that x and y have both been padded to have the same duration. And then we can maybe write that this is some distance between signal x from 1 to n and y from 1 to m. And we can calculate that. And that could maybe help us answer this question of how similar two signals are. But what's the problem with this approach? The problem with this approach is maybe it works for some points on the two curves and maybe works in some settings. But if you have a setting where the two signals are basically delayed, right? So this little bump clearly corresponds to that little bump, but we're never actually comparing those two bumps to each other. These two points here maybe correspond to these three points here. So maybe the blue signal have been stretched out a little bit. And here, this little triangle or thing compares to that. But we're not comparing those values directly because we're just naively going point by point. What we would actually want to do is compare this point here to this point here and say, oh, these guys are actually quite similar. And this point here is similar to this point here. Oh, I want to compare those. But that's not what we're doing with this naive approach. But that's exactly what dynamic time warping allows us to do. Dynamic time warping is an algorithm which tells us how to basically align two signals of different durations. So it's just important uh, for future reference to note that this is the naive approach, right? This is not what dynamic time warping is going to do. So if I feed this red curve with a certain number of points, and this blue curve with a different number of points to dynamic time warping, then this is the result we get. And these gray lines, they tell us which points on the one curve corresponds to the points on the other curve. So you can see here that the algorithm figured out that this point here should really be compared to this point here, and this point here corresponds to this point here. This point here corresponds to the point here, and this point here to this one. This point corresponds to multiple points, so you can do that where you have a single point that's basically aligned to several other points. And that's really neat, right? Now, I can tell you that if I know that the red figure's toe is, is hitting the floor there, then that corresponds to the point here where the blue figure's um, big toe is hitting the floor. So that actually answers the second question, which points correspond to um, each other on these two signals. But dynamic time warping can also tell us how similar two signals are. And I'll, I'll explain that just in a little bit. But the important thing is dynamic time warping basically looks at the cost of aligning these two signals, because this is really what's happening here. The two signals are being aligned point by point to each other. But dynamic time warping can tell us how expensive that is. And in this case, for this specific um, um, two signals, the alignment cost, I believe, is 0 0.5. That's an unnormalized alignment cost, and I'll say something about normalization a little bit later. And that's really neat to have what we call a distance metric between two signals that can be of different durations. So when you're doing, for instance, k-nearest neighbors, which you might be familiar with, um, then what you would often want to do is you want to compare two data items to one another. And if both items have the same dimensionality, the same number of points, then you can use something like cosine distance or Euclidean distance to compare those two vectors. But for sequences or signals where the number of points can be different, you need some other approach. And we looked at the naive approach, which basically compares things point by point. But dynamic time warping gives you a more principled way of comparing two signals, and it can tell you how costly it is to align the one to the other. So you can actually use dynamic time warping as a distance metric for k-nearest neighbors classification if you're dealing with sequences or signals. So for instance, let's, let's say this is my test item. This is someone walking and this is what we measured. And now we say we've got a little data set of previous walks from different people. So this is person one's walk, person two, person three. And the question is, this is my input now to my model, and I want to know which of these three people is the one walking in this, in this data measurement. So what you can do is you can do dynamic time warping between um, the blue curve there and each of the points in my, um, in my data set. So you do dynamic time warping between those two, you do dynamic time warping between those two, 
you do dynamic time warping between those two. And for each of them, you can figure out the alignment, but you can also figure out the cost of aligning them. And if I do this in, in Python, and I'll show that in uh, just a little bit, then the alignment costs for these different curves, again, it's unnormalized alignment costs. This one has an alignment cost of 2.5. This one has an alignment cost of 1.75. And the bottom one here has an alignment cost of 0 0.5. So you can basically say, oh, this one is the closest to this signal. And so I will predict that this signal comes from person number three. And before I said these alignment costs, before I gave them to you, if you looked at these figures and you had to guess which figure is basically walking here, which person is walking here, I think you will agree that this one and this one is the closest match. This one looks almost similar, but you can see it's actually a little bit the opposite. This thing is flipped down where it should be going up. And similarly here, you've got this uh, triangle going up where it should have gone down. So what I described here was basically a K is equal to one nearest neighbors. We just found the single nearest neighbor. In practice, what you would do is you would, of course, have a much larger data set, maybe with a few thousand different um, signals from different people. And then you might want to find the five closest points, the five closest sequences, which would be a K is equal to five nearest neighbors, and then take the majority um, class label assigned to those five points as your, um, as your prediction. So dynamic time warping isn't a model. It's really a distance metric between different signals. Now, I haven't actually spoken about how we can align different signals. If I give you two signals, how you actually figure out which points correspond to which points and how you get that cost. And that's what we'll look at now.